Hey, we have an author on the line with us. I'm always very excited about these folks that I get passed my way. I have one contact that is a holdover from Amy Oliver's show that, that she hooked us up, and he sends me some interesting, fine authors that we have onto the show. It's something I'm honored to be presenting to all of you, the listeners, because so many of them have just been beneficial. And when I've learned a lot, and I hope that you have learned a lot, this is going to be one of them. Bob Caparelli. Did I say it right, sir? You got it. That's perfect. <laughs> all right. Caparelli. I'll try. I'll keep on trying. Hey, my maiden name is Treehern, which is actually not that hard, but it tends to be hard for some people. So when I got married, it was a good thing because then I don't have to explain my name anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes people get it wrong, but it doesn't bother me at all, so it's fine. <laughs> it, it is the burden to bear. The funny thing is I have a couple of sisters, and both of them each, well, and twice, because both of them have been married twice, um, all four of those marriages, they all chose men with easy last names. And so I'm wondering if it's subconscious. I've often wondered that. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Well, hey, this is where I want to start. I tell you, I had someone on the show yesterday, an author on the show yesterday, that he was a multifaceted individual. And you have the same thing going for us. This is where I want to start. Talk to me about music. Yeah, so uh, so music is my love. It, it's something I've done my whole life, something I associated myself with, people associated me with throughout high school, throughout college. And then somewhere along the way, I went into business. And never lost music. I continue to do it as a hobby and even a little bit more serious than that uh, along the way. But, uh, but, but I, I just always loved it, and I've always tried to incorporate it into everything I do, whether directly or indirectly. And I'm continuing to do that uh, to this day with this book, which combines business and music in a way that I think is kind of unique. So, Can you give me a thumbnail of that? Yeah, to just you chew on here yeah. as we make our way through this conversation? Yeah, you bet. So, so the book is called Creative Strategy Generation, and what, what I've done here is, first and foremost, it's a step-by-step -step guide to creating a strategic plan. So a lot of people in business, whether large or small, have to put together a strategic plan, long-range long plan, to, to determine how they want to get to whatever goals they want to achieve. And many times that exercise can be very academic, and we either do it in an imitative way, kind of looking at what other big companies have done and try and do it the same way, um, or we kind of fill in blank templates like we've been taught to do in school. And neither of those things tend to produce very good results because they're not coming up with unique and creative ideas. So what I've done in this book is said, okay, let's take all those same tools that we've been taught and have worked in some ways and let's apply a creative process to it so that we could actually come up with unique ideas and unique strategies that will be differentiated in the marketplace. And the creative process I used is the same one that I used to compose music. So that's essentially the summary. Interesting. Hey, now, is this idea of I am not a marketing individual. I see the necessity of it. I see the effectiveness of it. So if I'm if I'm studying marketing 101, how far back does this idea go, or is this relatively new? Is this a new approach? You know, it's, it's interesting. I think the approach of kind of taking a completely unrelated <laughs> field of discipline like musical art and really directly applying it into the, the business world, that might be a little bit new. It's been done in different ways, but I think applying it to strategy is new. But the concepts that I'm using along the way are really the same ones that we've always been taught. Um, you know, looking at what your market wants instead of looking at what your company wants. Um, you know, some of the standard business tools that, you know, people in business might know of SWOT analysis or things like that. All these things are things that I bring up and use in the book. But what I do is I apply a process to it that allows you to come up with unique outcomes and unique outputs from those same tools. And that's what I think becomes different. I have not one creative cell in my body, not one. Is it something that can be taught to me? You know, uh, this is a question I get asked a lot. Can you teach creativity? And my answer to that is generally that you probably can't teach someone how to be creative, but what you can do is teach people how to tap into the creativity that they have inside but didn't know that they had. And it's a subtle difference. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people want a step-by-step -step guide to being creative, and they think by kind of checking certain boxes that they're automatically going to be creative. And that's not the way it generally works. 
what you have to do is find those things that are important to you inside and really find a way to connect those things to other people. And that part, I think, can be taught, understanding how to find those things and how to connect them. It's something that I am in the midst of trying to overcome myself with a project that I have at hand. And I I tell you, I really struggle with that. But you have some great starting points for me to sit at and move forward. Let's go over some of those right quick. Four skills to maximize my creativity. What would those be? Yeah, so, so the first thing that I talk about in the book is these things that are called four proficiencies. And a lot of people talk about skills, and I like to refer to them as proficiencies because it implies that not only do you have to have the skills, but you have to master them. And, and what I've done here is because the book is about strategy, I've related these four proficiencies directly to the strategic questions that business asks themselves all the time, which is where are we now, where have we been, where are we going, and how are we going to get there? So the skills that that relate to those four questions are essentially analysis, which is analyzing your current situation, um, recollection, and recollection is understanding where you've been, understanding what influenced you, what are your experiences, what's your history. Um, Those two things, by the way, will lead you to your third proficiency, which is intuition, and that's about understanding intuitively how you want to get or where you want to go. And then the last skill is artistry, which is about really being creative and coming up with a new path to get there. And, of course, I give tips about how you can, uh, you know, learn and, and, and develop each one of these skills. But when you put them all together, you have a good roadmap to use your history to figure out where you want to go and get there in, uni- in, in a unique way. So the person that has this creative ability, are they – I know this is probably too encompassing of a question, and, and perhaps there's there's – not a a correct answer to it you know we hear about type a personalities and type b personalities who is the one that's more likely to be creative oh that's a good question i don't know that i've ever really studied that um i will tell you this though a lot of times where creativity comes from is in in really learning about where you are today i think where people get kind of mixed up sometimes in creativity is they tend to associate creativity only with art and with music and and things like that. And a lot of people who associate creativity with those types of disciplines tend to feel that creativity kind of hits people like a lightning bolt from the head. You know, it comes out of the sky somewhere and it it just pops into your head. And really that's not the way that it works. The way that it works is that you spend years learning your craft, learning your instrument, learning how to paint or draw, whatever other disciplines you have. And it's from that, those lessons and from that foundation that actually new skills and new ideas are born. And I think, you know, whether you're type A or type B, the people that are more inclined to take the time to learn a craft and learn how to do things and really understand the world around them, that's where the new ideas are going to come from, and I think that's where creativity comes from as well. Well, how do we how do we clear our mind to make that happen? So a lot of clearing your mind has to do with I think being being pretty well organized, right? I happen to be a very organized person. I'm not saying that every creative person is, but where I find that it it helps me personally is if I know where everything is and I kind of find things in their place. I have more room to bring new ideas and new information in, and that new information inevitably leads me to new ideas and new directions. And if I didn't make that room and have that organizational skill, I don't think I'd I'd have as many new ideas as I do in a day. Well, see, and that comes naturally to me. I I don't deal well with any type of clutter. Even I I would include mental clutter in there. It drives me crazy. I have to... You know, on a mental level, anything that I take in, it has to be, quote, unquote, filed into its proper place. I can't yeah, just I'm sit the there. same exact way. I actually just wrote an article on this because it does relate to the book in some ways. And I was, I was uh, looking at people's inboxes, just people that I work with. And, you know, sometimes people put a, a PowerPoint on, on the screen and you get a, a brief glimpse at the number of unread emails in their <laughs> inbox. And the numbers are staggering. <laughs> you know? and, and I just can't live that way. I think, you know, the more clutter that you have, it, it, just, it just makes for a more complicated life. And I think that that could be a it's problem. It's so funny that you said that. Uh, a couple months ago, uh, just on my Facebook page, I, 
I lamented the fact that I had, you know, probably 50 emails sitting in my inbox and it was driving me crazy. And a lot of the comments following that were, well, I've got 2,000. Some of them even went up higher than that. That would drive me absolutely insane. But they also happen to be people that I know are successful in their own fields. And so it made me take some time to think about, am I doing something wrong here? <laughs> I know. I've, I've had the same conversations because I've seen people with two and 3,000 unread emails and I say, that can't be a good thing. But you're right. Sometimes they are successful. <laughs> but for me personally, I-, I would tell you that the more room that I make for things and the more organized that I am, the more room I have for new ideas and new projects. And, and it's benefited me, at least. So let's, let's cover a few more items here. So finding inspiration and using it, turning into that creativity, to find that end goal, what are some pointers on how to do that? How do we find inspiration? It's a it's a great it's a great question and one of the things I'll kind of take it in personal life and then in business as well. So when you're inspired personally, usually what happens is you know something really affects you deeply. There's some feeling that you just want to express to someone else. Something really touches you so much that you feel the need to, to spread that in some way. Um, and and whatever vehicle you choose to spread that with, whether that's music or art or whatever other discipline you're comfortable with. You know, you, you take that feeling and you want to project it and connect it to someone else. Um, so that's kind of where inspiration generally would come from. In business, I would tell you, a lot of times the inspiration isn't there as much as I'd want. In the book, I talk about businesses being inspired not by their own motivations, but rather by what customers are looking for. How are you going to help the customer? How are you going to change the world? And those are the places that businesses can find inspiration. And when you use that as your inspiration for your strategic plan, all of a sudden great things are going to start to happen for you. Whereas if you just have the motivation to grow and get more profitable and and have more revenue, you know, you may be able to put a strategy together, but it's not going to connect with anybody and it's probably not going to succeed. Is there a, a trick to make that connection for some people that you're trying to entice? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, back to business, it's spending time with customers, right? So if you actually are, are spending all of your time inside your company, and I, I do a lot of training and consulting. That's essentially what I do for a living right now. And in every workshop that I, I give, I ask the people that are responsible for strategies, how much time do you actually spend out with customers? And many times you get the answers of 10 15%. It's just not enough. You can't get to know what troubles customers, what problems customers are facing when you're spending all of your time internalizing and looking at your own company. So you have to get out there and understand what's troubling the world so that you can correct some of that and create things that will actually connect with other people. Well, tell us more about your your book, why you wrote it, Creative Strategy Generation. Is there... um... I, I know that you're, if I'm taking a guess here, you just want to help people find that creative gene if they have it and utilize it to their benefit. And and I, I think that it's a unique approach because it, I think it transcends. It's something that, that I'm taking particular interest in here, as I said, because of something I'm, I want to work on. And messaging is, it's a tough hill to get over because it takes, it takes the, humility to to place yourself in in a in a uh, state of understanding that may be uncomfortable it does and and i'll tell you you know getting back to the reason that i wrote the book i spent 20 years in in large corporations right working in large corporations various different executive positions and so forth and um and a lot of that time i spent mentoring people on how to develop strategies how to develop marketing plans those types of things and what I was finding is that, you know, when people kind of approach it in what I'll call an academic way, take a template, fill in the template, um, it becomes drudgery. They don't enjoy their jobs. They don't enjoy doing it. And the result follows in kind. The result isn't what people want because there was no passion that went behind it. And so the minute that mm-hmm. I started, you know, inspiring people to find their own creativity in these things, bring something unique, bring something fun to it. And I use music very much as an analogy to help people do that because it's something they can relate to. Even if they're not a musician, they could relate to the output. It makes it fun for them. And all of a sudden they see that, wow, this can be a creative job and something that's unique. All of a sudden their eyes light up and they want to now you know, build a strategy and build a marketing plan and do things that they were not looking forward to before. Um, that's the main reason that I wrote the book. And just by putting steps in place that allow people to connect this in their brains, 
is, is been great, in fact, for me, because I love seeing the result of that. I would love to dig into asking you about the application of music to this, but that's something that I want the listeners to get the book and read that part for themselves. But this is something that I, I would love to point out. It doesn't matter what time, place, culture, space anyone has ever occupied on the face of the planet. There is music. There has been music. Everyone has a connection to some genre of music, regardless of what it is. And so it's almost like a universal language. That's exactly right. And that, you know, I, I, get, I was asked that in the very beginning when I was started to write this book as well. If I'm not a musician, can I relate to the lessons in this? Um, and, and the answer is absolutely yes. This is connected with people that never picked up an instrument before, but because they understand the way music affects them and how much they love music, all of a sudden they can relate to the lessons. So it really is, is very positive. So I have one final question for you here. You had made mention of the fact that you were in executive level positions in large corporations for 20-ish years. And I, I'm curious about a change in employees, employees in their, in their ideas and in their dreams, desires, goals, their work ethics, and perhaps an application that maybe you subconsciously used during those years that's your goal here of this book, this creative strategy generation. Is it something that you learned during those years because you witnessed a change? What was the change? Do you have any testimonials about any type of change? Yeah, so, I mean, I definitely witnessed a change throughout the 20 years that I was, that I've, and I've been doing this. And, and I would tell you that when I entered the business world, you know, 20-plus years ago, I think there were a lot more subjects that were maybe more taboo, right, bringing music and creativity and, and those types of social aspects into the job. I can't say universally wasn't accepted, but I, I, I never felt like I can really bring those things uh, to the table. And as I went on in my career and I started bringing these together, and, of course, the Internet started to come and social media, and people just became much more comfortable talking about things that were personally affecting them. And I think there's a lot more of a mix between personal life and business life now than there ever was. And so I think embracing I these agree. concepts. Well, yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm sorry? that's something that I have seen as well. And so I'm, I'm yeah. happy to hear you say that because that's something that I've witnessed. Yeah. And, the, and I think the that, personal I think life is starting to become part of the business life. It is. And so, so I think bringing parts of your personal life into your business first of all, makes it much more fun because there's less of a separation between, you know, job and, 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 and life, right? And they, they really are becoming more one and the same. And I think that's a good thing by and large um, because why should you not enjoy eight hours a day of your life, right? Um, so I think seeing that trend happening, and I think that's happening more and more is maybe what I would point to. And I think it makes this book timely in that way because it really does bring both of those worlds together in a way that I don't know has been done um, as formally as this before. So, I have so many other things that I would love to bounce off you, but I am out of time here. I, the thing that I would want folks to chew on, and I think it's important and it plays into here, your book, Creative Strategy, Strategy Generation, and I am going to link your book on my Facebook page, Stacey Petty Show, that, so that the folks can find it, and this is something that I've been trying to process myself for a period of time, so you've given me some extra information to chew on. As far as incorporating, um, I, I have seen an abundance of that personal life streaming over into your professional life, and it's, you know, if it's a... Um, taking more time off to be with your kids or bringing your kids to work with you. And, and I have my ideas or my, my leanings towards why I think this is happening. And I think it's, I think that you made a great point about it being an important part of our, our business thinking these days because a happier employee is a better employee. Bob Caparelli, a pleasure to speak with you. Again, I'm going to link his book on my Facebook page, Creative Strategy Generation. What a fun chat. we got to run to a break. We will be right back. Mom and Dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yes, it sure is. Welcome back. Final minutes of this 9 o'clock hour here on your News Talk 1310 KFKA. What a fantastic conversation we had with author Bob Caparelli in that last segment. A reminder, his book, Creative Strategy Generation. I did place the link 
from Amazon on my show wall on Facebook, so you can pick it up there. I have a an Amazon cart that's usually full of books, and I do a big purchase every now and then. That's getting added to my cart. I loved what he had to say. I am not a creative person, and so those little tricks that I can learn to help set me over the edge, something that I want to look into. 